want to welcome you to another blessed presentation of God's Holy Word with Pastor Omar Tebow. It's recorded live at Philadelphia Christian Church here in Lafayette, Louisiana. As always, each audio message is designed to bring you into a deeper knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's get into a message that's already in session. An explosion going to happen in the spirit. Your enemy is going to be scattered. They're going to flee. They came in one way, they're going to flee out seven different ways, the Lord said. You see, they all around you, on your back. They're trying to hem you up. You see, and listen, I want to tell you, we are in an age of temptation. Did you know that? We're in an age of temptation. And I would go as far as to say that this is the hardest time to live for Christ in all of the history of mankind. I'd go as far to say that. It's not that the sin have changed. No, sin is sin. It's all the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. That's, it's, that's all it's ever been. But sin is so readily available today. Sin is so sinful today. The temptations are all over the place. Whether you're driving down the road, the billboards. Man of God, you know what I'm talking about. And now they got the, the, the revolving billboards. The electric ones. Trick you up, man of God. You don't want to set no evil thing before your eye. You don't want to lust after nobody. Hallelujah. And commit adultery in your heart. And so you're trying to be right by God. And you're driving down Kali Saloon and Ambassador Caffrey. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And you look at the billboard and it's a safe one. Hallelujah. They're advertising for jelly. Jello. And the billboard switch. You know what I'm talking about. It's all over the place. You're trying to watch TV with your family. And the commercials that come on. You go online and the pop-ups that pop up. You, you, and, and, and the sin is right in your handheld device. Wherever you go, evil is always present. They didn't have that. Back in Jesus' day, they didn't have that 20 years ago, 50 years ago. The temptation is all around. We are in an age of temptation. I want to tell you, if we are in an age of temptation to combat that, we need an age of prayer within the church. We need to begin to, if we're being tempted like we've never been tempted before, we need to begin to pray like we've never prayed before. You see, that's what we need. That's the weapon that we need this day. You see? Oh, yeah, my friend. That's where we are. That's where we are. And y'all, it's TV, it's internet, it's, it's radio, it's music, it's the handheld devices. It's not only that, but sometimes, hallelujah, you thinking you can come to church on a Sunday, hallelujah, and you can let down your guards and you can take off your armor, hallelujah, woman of God, man of God, you've been fighting all week, can I just lay down the sword for a second, take off the helmet for a second, can I get this breastplate off me just for a minute, can I take off the shoes of the gospel just for a second, get my belt right, just walk in church, hallelujah, in my spiritual pajamas and get a word? <laughs> you thinking you can just let your guard down, but we're living in such an age. That you can even come to church and temptation will be at church. You understand what I'm trying to say? People not dressed right at church no more. And at Philadelphia, we try to be a modest church. And through the women of God and my wife's ministry, hallelujah, we try to push modesty. Don't dress a certain way, woman of God. Don't show certain things, woman of God. Don't tempt your brother like that. Don't lay a stumbling block before your brother like that. That's sin in the eyes of God. Don't be showing all of that, lines and all that stuff like that. Put that thing up there. <laughs> and if you don't know how to do it, just put your turtleneck on all the time. <laughs> all the time. Because obviously you don't know how low you can go. Just, just, <laughs> just put a turtleneck on that. We want this to be a safe environment for the men of God and also for the women of God. We don't want temptation to be up in this place. There's enough we got to deal with it on the outside. You see what I'm saying here? And some people don't like Philadelphia because we preach that. You see? And some men don't like to attend Philadelphia because we have that standard. 
You got to be careful, woman, woman of God. Some of you men of God just want to go to them little churches because they don't they don't tell the women how to dress in a Christian fashion. And you wondering why you want to go to that church. No word being preached. Nobody getting saved. But they letting them little young girls come to church in shorts and different things of that nature, not being modest. Ooh. Yes, my friend. Yes, my friend. You know, you know, we want to be a church. Hallelujah. Well, we shut the doors to temptation out there. It's enough. You got to go through that when you when you leave this place. You see, but Jesus said, pray that you enter not into temptation. It'll help us, man. It'll bless us, man, not to get in. Listen, I don't want to be tempted more than I have to be tempted. But when I don't pray, I'm just saying, listen, all temptation come my way. You see? Oh, yeah, he say pray that you enter not into temptation. That word pray is written in the present tense. You know that we're interested in words, not only words, original meanings, but the tenses that they're written in, past, present, and perfect, or future, rather, you see? This thing is written in the present tense, tense, which means that Jesus is not just telling them to pray one time. He's telling them to keep praying. There is never a time in your life, Christian, when you could say, I've prayed enough. You could never get that way. I could tell people don't understand prayer when I tell them pray and they say I'm praying. They don't understand prayer. (laughs) When somebody tells you to pray, you say, okay, because you could never be praying enough. Never be praying enough. And so when I come to you and I tell you the first point, hallelujah, listen, you need, or or the second point, you need to start praying. Somebody just saying, yeah, I pray, I pray. No, 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 no. You don't understand prayer. There is never a time in your life when you could say you've prayed enough. When I pray, how much do you pray? Once a day, you could be praying three times a day like Daniel. Well, pastor, I prayed three times a day. You could be praying all night long sometimes like Jesus. Well, pastor, I prayed all night long. Do your fast and pray. Amen. You see what I'm saying? Well, pastor, I fast and pray. I stayed up sometimes and I just, good. Now you got it. You done started it now. Now listen, the Bible says continue in prayer. Pray without ceasing. Hallelujah. Pray incessantly. Pray. Be instant in prayer. Pray. There is an atmosphere of prayer that we must live in. Every step we take, we pray. Lord, in the name of Jesus. You see? It's written in the present tense. He says, pray, pray, pray. Saints of God, let's look at our third point of the morning. In Luke 22, the Bible says here, and when he, when he was at the place in verse 40, he said unto them, pray that you enter not into temptation. Oh, God. I forgot. I forgot something, y'all. Because prayer will not only keep you from the temptation, keep you from the trouble, but once you find yourself in it, prayer will get you out of it. You understand that? So you pray that it don't come on you. But when you find yourself in it, prayer will get you out of it. When I think about trouble and trials and tribulation. I think about somebody like Jonah, amen, who was in the belly of the well. While he was in the belly of the well, the Bible says he prayed. Huh, brother? He prayed. And when he prayed, hallelujah, the the well spit him out on dry ground. There's somebody in the belly of a well right now, and I got a word for you. Pray. You're in trials right now. Pray. You see? Pray. Pray, pray, pray. It'll get you out of trouble as well. Let me see who else. Hezekiah, when he was sick, about to die, he prayed. And God extended his life. Hannah, when she was barren, going through the trial, tribulation, right then and there, couldn't have kids. She prayed, and God gave her seed. Isaac, when his wife was barren, Isaac prayed, and God gave him and his wife children. Right then and there, Paul was on a ship that was in a storm, about to go down. But Paul prayed, 
And every single person that was on that ship survived because of the prayer. Pastor, what you're telling us quickly. Prayer will keep you out of trouble, temptation. But once you're in it, prayer will get you out. Amen? Amen. Third and final point, y'all. Let's look at verse 41. Third point was, uh, third point is, he was withdrawn. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast and kneeled down and prayed. You see, the Bible says Jesus was withdrawn from them. Saints, that word withdrawn means to tear away. It means to tear away, you know. And I, I just I just feel in my spirit I need to show you this. Hallelujah. I don't know whose notebook this is, but I would just kind of <laughs> just kind of use that. That word tear away is a real visual word. Withdrawn means to tear away. Look what tear away looks like. Did you, did you, did you catch that? I know it's not too deep, but did you? <laughs> In order for you to have great times of prayer, you're going to have to tear away. You, you, you tear away things that, that, that you connected to already. Tear away has in it that it's not going to be easy. It's not going to come natural. The flesh ain't going to want to do it. But sometimes you got to listen, whether the kids want you to or not, whether the husband wants you to or not, whether the church, the ministry wants you to or not, sometimes you just got to tear away. You got to withdraw yourself. You see? You got to do it. That, that's the whole concept here. The Bible says he was withdrawn. He tore himself away. It means to cut out, to cut away. You see? And brothers and sisters, we got to do that to get alone with God in prayer. You know, we got to tear ourselves away from, like I said, family, man. The children, the spouses, they're going to run you ragged, man. They're going to always need you, always want to talk with you, always want your opinion, always want your advice and all this and all that. It can go on and on and on. And you can find yourself doing all those things, running yourself absolutely dry. And there comes a season where you need to tear away. You see what I'm saying? Tear away. You need to tear away from friends. Stay away from work all the time. You work when you're not at work. Yeah. <laughs> you're a workaholic. Yeah, right. And you're doing all that work, but you're not going to God to spend time with God in prayer. And some of y'all some schoolaholics. Everything is homework. Everything is school. Everything is school. Yes, yeah, school is great, but Jesus is better. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> And sometimes you need to tear yourself away. I realize I have this test. I realize I have this homework. I realize I have this project. But there's something greater calling me now. You see? You got to tear yourself away from your day. Because in prayer, if you're not careful, you'll call it prayer. But you're just sitting down planning your day. That's all you're doing. You sitting down there with a pen in your hand writing what you're going to do today. Or thinking about what you're going to do. Think about how much money you're going to make. That's not prayer. You got to tear yourself away. You see? We must cut out some time for God, Joe. And it can't be while we're doing other things. When I talk about prayer, some of y'all say, I pray, but you pray while you're doing things. You pray while you're cooking. Yeah. yeah, Jesus, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> These pancakes, Lord, hey. And you call that prayer. Listen, and it's good, yeah, it's good. Because you're supposed to pray without ceasing. That's one level of prayer. But you need another level of prayer. A level of prayer where you single out everything. Matthew 6 says, you shut the door. 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 
pray that you are blessed, encouraged, and challenged by today's message. As always, we would love for you to fellowship with us in person. Our service times are Sunday at 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. Also on Tuesday's midweek service at 7 o'clock p.m. You can check us out on the web 24 hours a day at philadelphiacc.org. Until next time, God bless.